Well, uh, the, we don't have any biomarker, we don't have anything specific to make a diagnosis of Bechet or neuro Bechet. So it's mainly based on the clinical manifestations of the disease. And neuro Bechet occurs in a, about five to 10% of people with systemic disease. And uh, so we can make a diagnosis of neuro Bechet only in the presence of the known systemic disease, uh, which in fact is recurrent oral ulcers plus two of the next four criteria, which is uh, genital ulcers, uh, skin lesions, uh, eye inflammation of viitis, and the pterygy uh, reaction. So once you make a diagnosis of Bechet disease, and someone with Bechet disease develop neurological problems uh, and which you cannot explain with any other disease, medication or similar uh, things, then you start thinking of neuro Bechet and you have to confirm this either by abnormalities consistent with neuro Bechet on the MRI or on the CSF as well. Well, we have to first look at how neurobechet presents. It's uh, a very heterogeneous presentation it has. It's not just one type, it's, it's different types of neurobechet we have. So we call one of them parenchymal neurobechet, which is the commonly seen form in the adults. Up to 80% of the people presents with this form, which is a small vascular disease, vascular inflammatory disease in the brain, mostly affecting the post-capillary venules. Uh, so you get multifocal, sometimes focal CNS findings, which are mostly in the brain stem and uh, involves also the corticospinal uh, tracts. So the presentation would be with ocular uh, or it ocular parades mainly cranial neuropathies, mainly the uh, ocular motor nerves, the facial nerve, and uh, also uh, ataxia, uh, weakness on one side or so on. So that's why uh, neurobechet is included in the differential diagnosis of many CNS diseases, mainly MS, related disorders, and also the stroke in the young. Uh, however, in fact, Neurobechet is very uncommon and I understand that it's not well known by uh, mainly by people in the Western world because it's, it's, it's very uncommon. Uh, somehow it is called the disease of the Silk Road so it is seen more commonly in my country, Turkey and also on the Mediterranean region basis and along the Silk Road, mainly in Far Eastern countries like China and mainly, mainly Japan. Uh, so maybe if young person presents, and it, it, I should mention that it affects more, well, it affects, this is affects both genders at a similar rate. However, when it is a neurological involvement, then it is more commonly in men. Uh, so, and the onset of the disease is in the, l in the later third decade and the neurological complications or listen, the neurological disease, if it occurs, it occurs a couple of years after the onset of the systemic symptoms. Uh, however, there is an exception to this. Uh, again, about 15% of the people present with uh, cerebral venous sinus thrombosis. So this is a large vessel disease, what we call. And this occurs mainly in younger people or in the pediatric population. Strangely, it is 80% of the neurobechet cases are cerebral venous sinus thrombosis and only a minority parenchymal disease. So we believe that the pathogenesis is also different in either form 
as it is very, very uncommon to see the both forms in the same individual.